All right, let's do it. Two hours. Fred Rogan, Rodney Pete on AM570 LA Sports. Don't blame Russ. You point that finger nope. at Russ, you got four fingers pointing back at you. Don't blame Russ. <laughs> it's not his fault. They still lost. They still, could, still couldn't make a three. They still lost. Don't blame Russ. So for Russ, that was a great night. No, he doesn't want his team to lose. But because they lost, nobody could say they could win without him. So therefore, it was a win for Russell Westbrook. You see the glass is half full. The glass is half full for somebody. It was a win for Russ, a loss for the Lakers. Don't blame Russ, Rodney. It wasn't Don't. his fault. It's painful. It certainly is not his fault. Do you ever say, oh, uh, who said it was his fault? All his fault, first of all. And if you did say it was all his fault, then you haven't been watching the games because they've got clearly, clearly more issues than just Russell Westbrook. I mean, they can't shoot, Fred. They are last in the league, I believe. They're last in the league in three-point percentage. Um, they can't even shoot from a two-point percentage. Uh, I just they 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 can't shoot, and it's uh, I don't know where that comes from. Other than you know bringing other people in because all of a sudden are they going to become better shooters in the course of? 78 more games? Well, you would have to think the law of averages would allow them to go up a bit. It can't be this bad, right? No, it it can't be this bad. I mean, it looks like they don't know how to shoot. They're getting open looks. Give Darvin Ham credit, okay? Let's give him some credit. First of all, he said he was going to stress defense. They are playing very good defense. Yes, they are. Give him credit. They're doing that. Also give him credit. Because if you watch the games, you do see guys are wide open. They are getting open looks. What are two reasons? One, because the offense works. LeBron is kicking the ball, and guys have open looks. The other reason they might be open is because the other team knows they can't shoot anyway, so why run out and guard them? We'll just worry about the rebound. But either way, they are open, and they're not knocking them down, and they're still trying threes. Maybe what what if they decided we're not going to shoot threes anymore? We'll just score everything inside. We'll just bang the ball inside. We have a better chance of making it from 10 feet than we do from three-point range. Do you think that would be a good plan? Let's just bang it inside now. Because we bang don't have anybody to, to shoot. Whom? To whom? Right. To whom? We got a big man, a center, that doesn't want to play inside. He wants to drift outside to the three-point line. But banging it inside to whom? Here's what we'll do. I've got the, <laughs> oh, Lord. No, I've got the plan. Listen. Because okay. I really do know basketball. So how about they try this? How about LeBron brings the ball down? They play AD away. They, they play him outside. And they play the guards. They go with two more guards, and they play him down low. So it's our guards against their guards inside. How about that plan? Okay. You and think that'll work? LeBron James as a guard. Well, LeBron James is uh, kind of a hybrid position. He handles yes. the ball, but we're also going to play two guards with him. And we'll put them inside on the blocks. And then we'll just go down low to our guards working against their guards inside. And that'll alleviate the three. And then AD can play outside because he doesn't want to play inside anyway. Is that a good plan? No, Fred. You're talking gibberish. That's not a good plan. It's not a good plan. I don't know if there is a good plan. Because when you design things and when you look and watch them play, they, they are doing... A lot of everything they're doing is is right and working. The defense, they're playing good defense. They are within this offense, they are getting wide open looks. I don't know what else you can you can ask for other than the guys are not making shots. I mean, in two of those games, they they if they just make of a, a, a couple or few of those shots, they win. Portland, if they just make three shots, they win. You know, I, I just, I mean, this, that game was tied at halftime last night. Tied. And then it went to, you know, it's, it's crazy because when you watch the Lakers play, they can go from tied to being down 12 at a blink of an eye. Right. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, in transition, it goes from them missing a three to a transition three for the other team. And then it, it. Then next thing you know, they're down six. Then it's down. They're down eight. Then they're down eleven. 
and and it's was in a in a matter of forty five seconds. It's it's incredible. This they 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 can't make shots, and I don't know the recipe to fix that with this constructed roster. All right, honestly, there are two there are two ways to fix it. Number one, and I'm telling you, stop shooting threes. Stop. Move the ball inside. Whatever that means and however you do it, we know this is not working. We know you can't shoot from the outside. We know you can't nail a three. Move the ball inside. Push the offense toward the basket. Shoot twos. Because you'll have a better chance. You're not shooting from as far away. Shoot twos. Don't take as many threes. That's one. Here's the other solution. You don't need 20 games. You don't need 20 days to know you got a real problem here. And you got to fix it. And you got to fix it right now. No one's magically going to learn to shoot. It's not going to happen. You, you, the problem is you knew that. You knew that going in. You need 20 days. You knew that before the season. I don't think they. Wait, whoever put this in, and, and I don't, you know, it wasn't. Know, everybody says it's Rob Palenka put these 20 games on it. Um, and there's some discrepancy of where that actually came from. But, um, I, you know, nobody needed 20 games to see that this team needed some help in some areas and that this wasn't going to work. No, you don't need 20 games. It's not working, and and you got to fix it now. But where is the help coming from, Fred? You're gonna to have to make a move. That's all step you step in, do. step in and shoot 18 footers. Well, yes, Rodney. 15 footers instead of 22 footers. Yes, it sounds very um, elementary, but yes, move closer to the basket. You're not gonna shoot as many threes. But defenses are built when they play the Lakers is to give them the three point shot. We're gonna back off. Okay, well then, as soon as you step in, we, you know we're gonna we're gonna clamp down and play, you know, tighter D. Well, we're gonna but play NBA gonna defense. You room. We're gonna play we're gonna NBA you defense room. against you, which we don't play when you shoot the three. Here's the problem: you keep shooting the three, you're not making them. So what's the difference? Move in closer. Move in. Shoot twos. You're not making the three. It doesn't matter. We'll give you a hundred threes. What do you make? Ten. That means you missed ninety shots. Move closer. Now they're going to guard you? Well, that's what yes. the NBA is. They're going to play defense. They're not playing defense now because they know you can't make it from there. So now you have to earn your money and move in closer and shoot. But you can't keep working the ball around the perimeter and guys wide open and nobody defending them. And the minute the shot goes up, the defender turns his back and runs to the basket for a rebound. That's what you're talking about in transition. That's how you score in transition. Guy shoots a three. Nobody's on him. There's an extra guy now rebounding. Grab it, outlet, pass, down, score. Done. That's what's happening. Yes. I mean, Anthony Davis took a three last night. He posed. He shot it, and he admired his own work. I think it was an air ball. It was, what are you doing? What what could you possibly be doing? Move in. That's, That's your answer. Move closer. Shoot closer to the basket. Try that. This doesn't work. Or try this. Make a move. Make a move now. I don't I think LeBron hadn't started 0 and 4 since his rookie year. Yeah, since back in Cleveland days. I'm, I'm not, yeah, sure if it was rookie or not. But yeah, I think so. I think it was definitely Cleveland days, but early. But I yeah, probably his rookie year. Okay. Yeah. Make a move. Now you have to. You but you knew you had to, right? Why are you saying now you have to? You knew you had to. Well, if that's the question, let me ask you this. Before the season, Dar- well, Darvin Ham did what he had to do. I don't put this on Darvin Ham at all. Jeannie Buss talking about how valuable Russ was. Polinka talking about how valuable Russ was before the season. If they're speaking like that, they probably think, well, maybe this thing will work. We get them out there and we let them go. You really believe that? No, I don't. Okay. Or, so, or, or, yeah. or they were delusional. Because if you knew there's an issue, why not address it? If you know there's a problem, why not correct it? Why? Because now here you are. So they have Minnesota next. I think they might be able to beat the Timberwolves. Minnesota's good. I think they might be able to beat Minnesota. But every day they yeah. lose, every game that goes past, you're 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 further behind. Anthony Edwards may have fifty. Who knows? 
you know what? Maybe they won't beat Minnesota. <laughs> maybe they'll be in pro. <laughs> they'll yeah, have trouble against Minnesota. to go off from time to time. For yeah. a- maybe maybe they'll they'll have trouble against uh. Minnesota. I just don't get it yeah. now. What don't you get? That's my point. What don't you get? You act like this is a surprise or a shock. I I I don't get that it's not being corrected. That's what I don't get. It's not being corrected. So are you on the, under the assumption that they're not trying to correct it? Uh, whether they're trying or not is completely irrelevant. What is relevant is it's not corrected. Hey, we're trying. We're doing our best. We're talking to everybody. We're trying to make a deal. By not moving him when they should have moved him, it just put the price up more. Yes, it did. Right. Put so, themselves in a bind. Right. Now, so, so that doesn't mean they didn't, they're out there not trying. Now that now teams know it's desperate, so like, no. Okay, that, that 27, 28 first round, those first round picks, oh, that, that's a given now. <laughs> that's a given. That's already in. There's no debate about that. <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> what else you got? So that's <laughs> that's out the window. You can't use that for leverage anymore. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we, we are, we're assuming that's already in the bucket. <laughs> right. <laughs> now let's talk. <laughs> yeah. That's a starting point. God, what a mess! Now, yeah. they can they can figure it out. They can uh, eventually they will. But God, you, you just think about how business operates. Any business, not just the Lakers, any business. How one move, just one, can set everything backwards. One move, the wrong move. The wrong move was bringing Russell Westbrook here in the first place. Look at the chain reaction of things that has happened since then. They're strapped money-wise. He had an attitude problem. He can't shoot. People blamed him. Now you realize him being here is a problem, but on the court he's not the problem because they still can't shoot. They should have traded him before the season. Didn't want to do that. Start the season with the guy, and now he's in a position where he really can't do anything. He's not helping you. You still can't shoot. And the price, the price to move them has gone up exponentially. What what do they do every day in their offices over there? What, what do they do? Are they playing cards? What, what do they do over there every day? <laughs> I don't know, Fred. I I I I don't know. I, I mean I'm assuming that they are trying to do something, but like I said, I think that the rest of the league is like, you had your shot. Now, now we're going to stick it to you. Now it's going to really cost you. And I don't even know if the Lakers have enough. That's the issue. What is the definition now of enough? Yeah. You have draft picks in 27 and 29. Okay. Yeah. You're getting those two. What else are you going to do for me? Because I want to compete before 2029. Yeah. What else are you going to do? What else what you else got? Gonna do for me? Yeah. What are you going to th- right? What are you going to throw I mean, my way? And and then it goes to the next step of that goes to dare I say, okay, we got to move Anthony Davis, or we got to move LeBron, and we got to start all over. You want to have that conversation? <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I mean, you, you've had opportunities to surround this. Okay, you did the Red Westbrook thing. That that was a debacle, right? But you can't – You, I mean, that's one guy. You can't find shooters. You can't find shooters around you, wait. To, to supply around Le- LeBron. You can't, you can't find shooters that play basketball because yeah. that's their job, to shoot. Yes. What, what, hey, I can't believe it. There are no shooters available. Yeah. Isn't that how you score in basketball? You shoot? Yeah. Isn't by that way, how you get a, to the NBA? You shoot? By the way, there was a guy on the other team that was hitting a couple threes last night, too, that made some big threes in their in their uh, championship run. I think his name is uh, KCP or something like that. I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember yeah. who he was. Yeah. See, before, every time I see And every time I see a clip of Caruso doing stuff at both ends, that you, you see clips on Instagram and people talking about him, it's like, yeah, he was here. He was here too. Yeah. You know, uh, energy, chemistry, all those things that you want, intangibles, all the things you, you, you look for. He was here. He was here. 
You see, uh, Kuzma um, had twenty five the other night. By Kuzma the way. had twenty five. Saw that. Yeah, yeah. Only was he was only a guy that was going to continue to get better. If he was still here, I think he was going to continue to get better. Yeah, it, it's just they're in a they're early in the season in a situation that is so dismal that that road to the end of the year seems so far down the line. Like, I, you know, you sometimes think, when are they going to put me out of my misery? Well, you got a long way to go before that happens. Because there's no light, Fred. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And poor, I mean, look, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at some of these clips. And, and LeBron, unfortunately for him, you know, he's driving and he's kicking and nobody's making a shot. And then finally he's like, all right, I'm just going to launch some threes myself. Can't be worse. We try to get us back in it. And it's just, it's it's so bad. You can feel the frustration. It's like, I'm taking it to the lane. I got three guys guarding me. It's a dream for any NBA player. Oh. It's a dream. You could, Three guys are now collapsing on you. I'm yes. standing here wide open. Give me the ball. It's a yes. dream to be in that situation. And they can't shoot. And they can't shoot. Their dream is a nightmare. The one thing you said, I said, I said it before the season, uh, and maybe too soon now to seriously revisit it. I talked about getting in the LeBron business. We talked about that. Anthony Davis and LeBron command a lot of the money. Russ commands a lot of the money. The Lakers are not going over that luxury tax like the Warriors or the Clippers. They don't have the money to do it. So this is what you get. And when you say maybe if yeah, this but doesn't they work. Had a win, they won a title. Right. And then they blew it all up. They had a title and blew it all up. I don't know. So if, it did if, work. But I don't know if they were forecasting down the road what it would cost them to hold on to that team. I don't know what it would have cost them, I, and I don't. I'm just being honest. But given that we know that they don't have the cash flow of other clubs, maybe they had to get rid of those guys. When you're committing that much money to AD and LeBron, then what are we doing? What are we? In, what are we in the NBA business then? So are they the McCourts now, Fred? Yeah. Is that what we're saying? No, I'm not saying they're the McCourts. Jeannie does not get a haircut at her desk every day. But you know what I mean in the grand scheme is like you own a big market franchise but can't operate yeah. that franchise as a big market franchise. Cleveland under Dan Gilbert, yeah. granted he's a billionaire, but the Cavaliers were able to go oh, well into the luxury tax when LeBron was there. You tell me Cleveland can do that and L.A. can't. Well, what did you say at the beginning of that statement, Kevin? What? Dan Gilbert is a billionaire. Again, maybe this isn't the right business to be in at this point in time well, for may, the Buck family. And, and, you know what? It's tough to be a family-run business. Ask Mark Davis. Ask Dean Spanos. Ask people that have been around for forever and take great pride in their identity is tied to those franchises. Ask them how difficult it is to compete today. When you're competing with somebody that comes in with $100 billion, Steve Ballmer, Dan yeah. Gilbert is rebuilding downtown Detroit. Yep. And, and willing to dip deep into the luxury tax and go, I don't care. I need to get me winner. I need to get me some players. In San Francisco, $400 million in tax penalties? Yeah. No problem for us. We're happy to do it. You better have really deep pockets to compete with that. Stan Kroenke with the Rams? You better have deep pockets. Because yeah. they've got deep pockets. The Dodgers with Guggenheim? We're talking about Aaron Judge. Would they pay $50 million? They'd pay $150 million if they wanted to. They're not afraid to spend money. How do you compete with that? It's hard. I mean, you, and you talk about they're, they're not McCourt. McCourt was trying to sign a TV deal as leverage to keep the team to have cash flow from that sale or from that transaction. That's the exact same thing the Lakers did when they signed with Spectrum. Jerry Buss, you say it all the time, Fred. Had they not signed the Spectrum deal, they probably would have had to sell the team. Right. How was that any different than what McCourt was uh, trying to do? Well, but they got the Spectrum money. Thankfully. They got the Spectrum money, so they were okay again. You're living on the margins, I guess, is my greater point. Yeah. And well, it's hard to do yeah. that and compete in today's world in, in pro sports. It's very difficult, but I think that's where they're at. Why do you think they sold a third of the team to Todd Bowley? Why? That was like $900 million. That's right. Yeah. But 
they want to do that if you if you're going to do that then and you bring it on a partner and i'm sure you got to have a lot of money to buy a third of the team but bring on that partner and say hey we're going to have to dip into your pockets a little bit big fella hey you know what i appreciate you know? that i just gave you 900 million yes and we're going to need a 900 million mo <laughs> 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 now, partner. <laughs> hey, partner. <laughs> oh, my God. You want to compete, partner? This is what you got into. This is what you got into, my man. Now you're part of the big brand. Now now put your big pants on. Well, his big pants are on. He's one of the owners of the Dodgers. Yes. He got pretty big pants. Yes, he does. Oh, he understands. And he owns Chelsea now, the Premier League. You got to dip into it, baby. Tell you, it's a tough spot for him to be in. And really, Kevin, maybe you brought up the correct point. And we'll only know this in time. You know, can they really compete? Do they have that? Do they have the ability to compete in this NBA? In this world of professional sports? Because there is an expectation, if you are one of the premier brands in the world, that you've got to put a product out there that people are interested in. And excited about. Because here's what I think happens. Everybody loves to see LeBron. If you've not seen him, you should see him once. You really should. Once you've seen him, once you've seen him. And if the team is losing, you don't need to go see him again. You've seen him. You can tell your kids. You can tell your friends. Your kids can tell their friends. We saw LeBron. Great. After that, you don't need to go back if the team is losing. And my fear is that was that's what will happen. That we've seen LeBron. That's great. We saw one of the greats of all time. That's been the Laker model for years. Yeah, but they're, you know, 3 and 19. I'm not spending that money for those tickets. I won't do it. That's my fear, Rodney. What? The fans not going to show up? Interest. Apathy. That's my fear. Apathy will occur. Nah. No big deal. Mm. Nah. That's right. That, that's my fear. And we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. It's going to be a painful season. Painful. It already is. But it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse unless something big happens. And it happens soon. Okay. If you look at that schedule, it's not very favorable. No. They got to play Denver again right after Minnesota. And Denver didn't play well. And yeah, Minnesota's not a pushover, by the way, either. No. No. You know, uh, let me ask you this. You say something big's got to happen. What what could be so big? What? I'm talking about bringing in a player. Make that make some deal. Yeah, but what I'm saying is what kind of player if it's going to be big? I, I, I think back right now, if things have gone a little differently and DeMar DeRozan had been sitting here, do you mm. think we'd be having this conversation? No, not even close. Not even close to having this conversation. And in fact, they they'd be right in the conversation with the Warriors to to possibly come out of the West if Demar Derozan were here. I really believe that they picked Russ over Demar Derozan. Yes. Jerry Harrison Jr., Sportsnet LA analyst. Our buddy Jerry, how are you? I'm doing very well. How you guys doing? Doing well. Great. Okay, so Jack Harris started this in the Times. You and David Basset talked about it. The Dodgers not seemingly making adjustments, in-game adjustments, during these playoff games. Can you talk about what that means? Uh, Well, I mean, this has been um, a thing, I guess, among scouts throughout Major League Baseball. You know, David Basset does an incredible job, uh, you know, talking to a, a lot of different players, scouts from various teams. I've heard this the last couple of years and, you know, I, you know, sometimes, you know, you kind of, you take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but this year, uh, a couple of scouts that I know pretty well that are on other, other clubs kind of brought that to my attention that it's pretty well known. And then when Dave Vassay, who I didn't even talk to him about it, brought it up on the, uh, on a show we did this week, I was like, you heard that too, huh? And, and that's what I, I've been hearing. What, what it means is, you know, the Dodgers do an incredible job of scouting. Uh, they have uh, 
the incredible uh, you know, department w- with that. You scout players throughout the course of a long season, 162 games, and that's what you have to go on. Uh, what teams do is, on the flip side, they scout you know, our players. They, they know their players and how they play the style of play, and they kind of flip the script. Uh, let's say Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper is known, loves to pull the ball. He goes opposite field in the air, and he likes to, to pull the ball on the ground. In a short series, he changes up his approach because he understands how important contact is. You know, he's not going for the, for the long ball, you know, because players love to put up numbers, you know, throughout the course of a season. But in a short series, they change because they understand, hey, that base hit the left field is just as important than, than trying to go for a home run. So they change their style of play. And that's the same thing uh, as far as the pitching. You know, usually pitchers, they rely on two or three different pitches, and they say, I'm going to attack a hitter. This is the way I'm going to attack this hitter. But if they know on the flip side, let's say the Dodger player is looking for that particular pitch that they would throw in the regular season, they're going to flip the script and throw the different pitch at a different count. Uh, so that's what you can do in a short series. They can make adjustments on the fly as opposed to what I had heard. You know, in the past, the Dodgers will stick to their game plan, and this is what they have over the course of a long season, and they're going to go with the percentages. Now, this is what I've heard uh, through a v- variety of scouts throughout Major League Baseball. Dave, I say, heard the exact same thing. Um. Yeah, no, I, I I get certain people change things up when it comes to the playoffs, and it's a long season, and then you you meet somebody, especially a team within your division that you've played in over twenty times, and they've kind of owned you. Then you figure out, okay, we got to do something different. Uh, as as an organization, I, I okay, so you maybe have a, a certain game plan, but isn't it Jerry? Isn't it also up to the individual players to yes. to adjust during the course of a game? Listen, this guy starts me off with. X, Y, Z every time I faced him and then you get up there the first time up and he starts you off with something different. It's like, oh, okay. I see what he's trying to do now. Next time up, I'm going to look for something different. Isn't that on the players more so than anything else? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Rodney. You know, you have to, and I always value the player's opinion on the field. Uh, you, you take the scouting report and then you can have a sense of, of, of a player. I, I did it as a player. When I was at the Marky Brewers, we always used to play uh, Albert Pujols' pull side. You know, he was a pull hitter, especially on the ground. Uh, but it, when we got in the series, in the seven-game series, I noticed Albert Pujols making a concerted effort going the other way on the ground, especially with running to scrum position. And I told our manager and coaching staff, we're not shifting on Albert Pujols anymore. We're not doing it anymore. Because he is trying to hit the ball on the ground to take advantage of the hole. You know, those are the type of things you have to speak up as a player, you know, and, and, and you have to do it because in a playoff series, whether it's a five-game series, seven-game series, that one hit, that one RBI can spark everything, you know. So you have to be able to see how a player is approaching the situation, whether game one and game two, and this is how they're probably going to approach it throughout the rest of the series. So you have to be able to make changes on the fly, and sometimes you got to scrap your game plan. You know, because players in July and August, you know, when they're trying to chase their numbers, are going to change in the postseason because, hey, we got to get past this series and get to the World Series or get to the NLCS. So, you know, you got to be able to know that whether you're a coach, whether you're a manager, whether you're a scout, whether you're a player, you have to be able to make that adjustment on the fly. Jerry Harrison Jr. with us. Uh, okay, so there could be some issues with in game adjustments. How did the Dodgers address that? Is that something you think they already have figured out, Jerry, and it's something that must be addressed? I think they, they've heard it. I, I'm sure they have. If it got to me, I'm sure it's gotten to them now. You know, so, uh, again, I played for nine different teams. Uh, if, you, if you look at the managers that are in Major League Baseball, uh, I'm pretty good friends with a lot of them, or I played with a lot of them. You know, um, so, and a lot of those guys are now scouts you know, assistant GMs, GMs, or in our organization. So, listen, in, in all sports, Roddy, you know this in football. You all talk. We all talk. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you have friends everywhere. So, like I said, if it's gotten to me, I'm sure it's gotten to uh, uh, the, the team, and they're going to adjust accordingly. 
you know, so, you know, hopefully they, 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 they like learn from it. But bottom line is if you go back and look at the series and I love what the players have said, you know, starting with Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Justin Turner, who, you know, wrote, I don't know if you guys saw, he wrote something yeah, on his Instagram, and said, yeah. which was incredible. You know, they're hurting and they are making no excuses if we got one or two hits or put the ball in play, you know, when they're on a runner on third base, instead of swinging and missing or popping up, they sweep the Padres. They sweep the Padres. They not, only, not only do they win the series, they sweep the Padres. I, listen, I've gone back and looked at game two and game three. The Padres had so many opportunities. The pitching was incredible. Dave Roberts, Mark Pryor, the entire coaching staff did an incredible job making sure – that they put their team in position to, you know, what they call, you know, making sure you have run prevention. They did that. They had run prevention, and they kept the Padres at bay. Uh, But if they had one or two hits with runners in scoring position, they sweep the Padres, and then they go on to face the Phillies in a seven-game series, and maybe by that time they hear what's going on, and the Dodgers are able to make adjustments. So, again, it's all about – putting the ball in play, and listen, as a former player, I think about 2011, I think about 2013, 2010, the opportunities we had as teams and players to advance, and we didn't. I think about that a whole, whole lot more than 2009 when we won a World Series. You think about the opportunities that passed you by, and I know this is going to sting for the players for an awful long time. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And, and I always have said that, Jerry, you know, as a player – People can talk about everything else. They can talk about management. They can talk about the manager. Uh, but at the end of the day, the players on the field are the ones. And I always yep. felt like we we take the responsibility. You can the fans can blame everybody, but as players and in that clubhouse, we know we didn't get it done. And sometimes it is just as simple as what you just stated. If you get three, four hits in that course of that series. It's a whole different series. They sweep the Padres, and it's about runners in scoring position, which they did not come through. Um, and, 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 and that could be as simple as that. I mean, we look up and you just mentioned Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper, in the moments, came through. And in yeah. the moments for the Dodgers, their big guy, Mookie Betts, did not. Um, and, and so it's just sometimes it's very simple and not as complicated as people want to make it out to be. Yeah, and, and the players have said that. You know, Mookie has not shied away from it. Freddie, who had a great series, didn't shy away from it. Will Smith, all the players – they, they show tremendous class and character in saying, guys, flat out, we just didn't get it done. We didn't. Uh, and, and that was, you know, a, as players, you always look back. It's not the coach's fault. It's not the manager's fault. It's not the front office's fault. Because the front office, all they can do is make sure, hey, this is a team. You have a talented team. You got to go there and perform on the field. That's all you can ask for as players. Rodney, you know this. You, you ask for the front office to get you players, right? To get you Talented players, so we can have a great group of guys to have a chance to win the World Series. Year after year, the Dodgers do that. You know, you look at the roster, talented roster, and the players know that. You, you give me Mookie Betts, Trey Turner, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, who had a great second half of the season. Uh, you get that entire roster, you feel you have a great chance to, to beat any team. You know, but uh, again, you know, the players didn't make any excuses. They were up front. They feel like they just didn't get it done. I think a lot of these guys are going to learn from it. I think they're going to have a, probably a better two-strike approach uh, coming into the postseason next year uh, and make sure that, hey, forget about you know trying to drive the ball. I'm, even if I have to get my foot down early you know, and I got to hit something hard on the right side or, or the other way, I got to do that because we have to, we have to be able – make better contact in, in certain situations to get one or two runs across because one or two runs literally was the difference in game two and three to, to advance and, and have a chance to go and play in the NLCS. All right, Jerry, good job. We appreciate you coming on. Anytime guys. Listen, I, I've been, I've been hurting, man. I, I feel for the players. I feel for the fans and the fans have every right to be upset and they're passionate Trust me, as a former player, you want passionate fans. And I know the players appreciate the Dodger fans. Well, we appreciate you saying that as well. Yeah, it's been tough for everybody. All right, Jerry, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for jumping on. All right, guys. All right. Uh, Jerry Harrison Jr., Rodney. And, uh, you know, he said – Good stuff. Yeah, but, you know, he said something. And if you don't play the game, 
then you ask this question. These guys are going to have to realize, maybe you have to put your foot down sooner, maybe you have to hit the ball to the right side. He, in essence, said maybe you just don't swing for the wall every time you're up. Okay. I guess that comes down to this. Why aren't they doing that already? Why isn't that just normal? Why is that something you have to emphasize? Why aren't they playing that way every day? And I'm being honest. I think as a fan, you'd just go, well, all right. If that's all you have to do, why don't you do it? Because it's real life. It's real time. So you have to be able to see things and adjust in real time. And even though you are trying, it may be not, it doesn't work. You know, and maybe you do recognize it. Okay, this is something different I got to do, but you don't execute it. Uh, there's a variety of different reasons that you, you do something. But it's a fluid game. It's a fluid situation uh, in, in any sport. And you have to be able to adjust to it. And even if you do adjust to it, you still have to execute. And just because you adjust to it doesn't mean it's going to work. All right, we are giving away UCLA Stanford tickets today. We have one pair to give away. We'll give them away between now and 2 o'clock. 